Boris Yeltsin's resignation saw Vladimir Putin inherit a Russia on its knees, a state in a state. You name it, from shocking poverty and internal wars to terrorism. So the largely unknown Putin faced a daunting challenge. A former KGB agent was also a reformer in his native St. Petersburg, a combination of toughness and liberal-mindedness that seems to appeal to the Russian people. Putin quickly got down to business, starting with Chechnya. We will hunt down the terrorists everywhere, in airports, and if we capture them on the toilet, we will waste them in the outhouse. After a wave of Islamist terror attacks all over Russia, Putin initiated the second Chechen campaign. The fighting and death toll were brutal. It was to be the new leader's first, but certainly not the last, run-in with the West, which condemned Russia's use of force. But the Iron Fist approach was winning Putin's support with the public at home. I can assure you that my actions will be guided only by the interests of the state. It was not to be smooth sailing, especially when it came to the oligarchs. <laughs> Some of them came into my office and they said to me, do you realize you will never be president? And how did you deal with them? Using various means. And one by one the tycoons fell and their all-conquering power evaporated. The Kremlin was back in control and now building bridges. And I looked the man in the eye. I found it to be very straightforward and trustworthy. Uh, we had a very good dialogue. I was able to um, get a sense of his soul. In the hands Souls of, aside, Putin's first nations. term did not get any He's easier. Afraid. Rescue efforts are underway in an attempt to save over 100 crew members believed to be trapped on board the stricken submarine. Tell me, what happened with the submarine? I don't know. The sinking of the Kursk submarine proved trying for Putin. Not only was it a national humiliation, but it also sparked uproar at home. But with the ugly came the good. With the oligarchs gone, taxes began pouring into the state coffers. Russia's enormous debt was gradually reduced and the economy forged ahead all helping to seal Putin's second term. Four years on and Russia was a different country, but not all old problems had gone away. Islamist radicals held more than a thousand people hostage, 800 of them children, in a three-day long siege. Almost 200 children died then. Security forces and Putin himself were often blamed for mishandling the rescue operation. The president's zero-tolerance approach to radicalism meant more state control, and the Western media cried foul. He's gained control of the parliament, both houses of the parliament. He's gained control of the political parties. He has suppressed civil society. Any civil society groups that don't completely tow his line are in, in trouble. Putin, however, was never much on isolationism, and even critics acknowledge he had a way with words. The cult of Putin even made it to print. From judo throwing to piano playing and race car driving, the cameras captured it all. Barred constitutionally from running for a third consecutive term, in 2008 Putin set up his longtime friend Dmitry Medvedev as president. 
president or prime minister, Putin's gauntlet went on. In August of 2008, Georgian rocket artillery opened fire on the breakaway Republic of South Ossetia. The attack prompted a Russian military reaction. Tonight, Secretary of State Rice is calling on Russia to end its assault on the Republic of Georgia, now a U.S. ally. Georgia's president says Russia is attacking his country. The media's angle of Russia as the aggressor unraveled as the story unfolded. Before I say anything else, I just want to say that I was running from Georgian troops bombing our city, not Russian troops. I want to say thank you to the Russian troops that were helping us out. But the year was not yet over. The financial crisis of 2008 threatened a decade of economic ascent. Only a year ago, on this very stage, our American friends told us about the fundamental strength of the U.S. dollar. Nevertheless, Russia slowly recovered. But as the middle class grew and grew, so did dissent or anti-Putinism. Suspicion of fraud in parliamentary elections pushed thousands of Russians to protest making Putin's third presidential victory all the more important and emotional. I promised you we would win. And we have won. But two months after, the protests came back and came to a head. That was the last of any major anti-government displays, but the state did ease certain electoral restrictions, and the statistics were on Putin's side. By 2013, Russia's economy had grown 10 times. National debt was down to one of the lowest levels in the developed world. Pensions and salaries were up almost by 1,500%. And how better to celebrate than with Olympic Games. Olympic Winter Games in 2014 are awarded to the city of Sochi. Yeah! Russia won the right to host the Sochi Winter Olympics, but it first had to rebuild an entire city. We have an ABC News exclusive investigation into dramatic charges of rampant corruption, stories of bribes, suitcases filled with cash, the mainstream media seized on stories painting a less than favorable picture. The smiling dog to my right is not from the dog show. He's from Sochi, Russia, and he's probably dead now. The run up to the games only intensified rhetoric to unprecedented levels. Could this be the face of a female suicide bomber? I don't think I would uh, send my family. Every event, you're going to have some type of threat. But the games went off without a hitch. And Putin even got to watch Russia race to the top of the medal rankings. The smile, though, did not last long. A violent coup involving radical nationalists in neighboring Ukraine put Russia in a difficult position. What to do about Crimea, populated in the majority by ethnic Russians and home to the Russian Black Sea Fleet as well as thousands of military personnel. We had to take measures to prevent the situation from developing in the way it has done in eastern Ukraine with tanks and well-armed radical nationalists. Our servicemen acted reasonably, decisively and professionally. Within weeks, a rapidly organized referendum saw Crimea vote to secede from Ukraine. It was about millions of Russians, millions of our compatriots who needed our help and support. The consequences were severe. The perceived land grab saw Russia suspended from the G8 and slammed with sanctions from the West. The president uh, has made it clear there will be consequences if Russia does not find a way to change course. There will be a suspension of political relations. There was supposed to be a summit between the European Union and Russia that cannot happen in these circumstances. The GA does not exist any longer, neither the summit nor the format as such. 
But after 15 years of trial and tribulations, Vladimir Putin has made one thing clear. He'll take the challenge. Maybe our bear needs to sit quietly, eat his berries and honey. Maybe then he would just be left alone. But no, they'll always be trying to put him on a chain. And as soon as they do that, they'll pull out his teeth and claws. Soul. Souls aside, Putin's first term did not get any easier. Rescue efforts are underway in an attempt to save over 100 crew members believed to be trapped on board the stricken submarine. Tell me, what happened with the submarine? I don't know. The sinking of the Kursk submarine proved trying for Putin. Not only was it a national humiliation, but it also sparked uproar at home. But with run-in with the West, which condemned Russia's use of force. But the Iron Fist approach was winning Putin's support with the public at home. I can assure you that my actions will be guided only by the interests of the state. It was not to be smooth sailing, especially when it came to the oligarchs. <laughs> Некоторые из них пришли ко мне в кабинет, в Белый дом. Some of them came into my office and they said to me, do you realize you will never be president? And how did you deal with them? Using various means. And one by one the tycoons fell and their all-conquering power evaporated. The Kremlin was back in control and now building bridges. And I looked the man in the eye. I found it to be very straightforward and trustworthy. Uh, we had a very good dialogue. I was able to um, get a sense of his... Boris Yeltsin's resignation saw Vladimir Putin inherit a Russia on its knees, a state in a state. You name it, from shocking poverty and internal wars to terrorism. So the largely unknown Putin faced a daunting challenge. A former KGB agent was also a reformer in his native St. Petersburg, a combination of toughness and liberal-mindedness that seems to appeal to the Russian people. Putin quickly got down to business, starting with Chechnya. We will hunt down the terrorists everywhere, in airports, and if we capture them on the toilet, we will waste them in the outhouse. After a wave of Islamist terror attacks all over Russia, Putin initiated the second Chechen campaign. The fighting and death toll were brutal. It was to be the new leader's first, but certainly not the last,